Welcome back to part two. Remembrance Road, you can go that way or you can walk through here. Now I am going to point you over to the left because this is where newer graves are but I thought this was a nice little area because when I do a cemetery, a big cemetery like this, I do walk around first to try and spot any particularly interesting graves or nice bits that we can walk through. Like this little, looks like a little bit of a maze area. That's it, I'm not covering any of the graves. Because they're new, well, yeah, they are 2020, 2021, yeah, they're, they're relatively new. So, yeah, with the, with the modern graves, you don't uh, cover those unless, obviously, you've got consent from the family. But anything before, say, 1940, you're generally okay with... Let me walk out through here. onto Remembrance Way. That's the way we've just come through there. Edward James Smith, son of the above, but the set bit that says family grave of, it's his bliss blistered but it's got his surname, son of the above who died April the 2nd 1895, aged 24 years, also the above named Elizabeth Smith who died June the 23rd 1900, aged 62 also Henry Smith who fell asleep May the 20th 1900, aged 70 years also William Smith who fell asleep September the 20th, 1911, aged 31 years. So that bit at the top that's gone will say the family grave of Henry and Elizabeth Smith. Sometimes you can, if you're lucky, so you, they have the surname included in the inscription. Sometimes you're unlucky and it just says the family grave of da 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 at the top and then you'll have no, no surnames in the rest of the inscription. And this is the family grave of Joseph and Annie Golding. In loving memory of Joseph Golding, who died 18th of July 1886, aged in the 66th year of his age, forever with the Lord. Uh, also, Annie Golding, wife of the above who died the 17th of April, 1891, in the 62nd year of her age. Then you've got also Joseph Golding, son of the above, who died the 2nd of October, 1898, in the 32nd year of his age. And then you've got also Mark Parsley Golding, something of the above. Sorry, no, it's Mary, also Mary Parsley Golding, daughter of the above, who died the 17th of April, 1913, and the rest of it's gone, I'm afraid. Here you've got the War Memorial, Remembrance Road, not Remembrance Avenue, and here you've got the War Memorial, which of course we're going to cover properly. The cross of sacrifice is one design and intention with those which have been set up in France, Belgium and other places throughout the world where our dead of the Great War are laid to rest. The Cross of Sacrifice, anyone that goes back to my Rye videos, which, which I think were around about May or September, or I think I went in August and September last year, but anyway, if you go back to Rye, you'll see in Rye Castle the mock-up for the gentleman that created the Cross of Sacrifice, and then you get to see the real thing on one of the memorials in Rye Churchyard. But that's a little piece 
of history that connects us to Rye in East Sussex, which is one of my favourite places. And this is 1914 to 1918 on this side. Private E. Cornwell. Wonder if its relation must be, well, I should imagine it would be a relation to uh, Jack Cornwell. Or was his brother Edward? I'll have to check back in the uh, part one and see because there was the two Cornwell brothers, weren't they mentioned on the stone?
<clears throat> there we are. Indeed, their name does live if forevermore. We're gonna <clears throat> we won't be stopping at many graves on this part of the tour. We're gonna be having a walk around really. Important notices. Oh it's reserved. You can reserve your spot if you wish. A lot of people do that now. You can buy them at current prices rather than goodness knows how much it will cost in the future. You do to think really, don't you? This is the um, Rose Garden Remembrance. And as you see, the, a lot of the graves on either side are more modern. That's interesting. One there was the top three people were 1880s and 1890s. And then someone right at the very bottom, 2001. You can have that done if you get an old family grave that's still got space. Away you go. In loving, a uh, sacred to the memory of Elizabeth Chambers, who died October the 5th, 1920, aged 65 years. Also, George Chambers, husband of the above, who died 15th of June, 1933, aged 52 years. Oh, wow. Big age difference between them two, bless their little cottons. Obviously happy enough, well, maybe, I don't know, do we? <laughs> I'm just presuming. As I say, we won't be stopping off anywhere here because these are the more modern ones. Here is a, I don't know the proper name of it, it's like a, a little mausoleum area for ashes. There are little vacant spaces in there and you put the ashes in and... Yeah, where well, you go. It's a lovely church. Look, it's got a nice little church, this one. The tower, of course, is the oldest part of the church, as you can see. Uh, repairs, the rest of it's in brick. The main part of the chapel isn't open, obviously, to the public, so... We'll have a walk around this way, shall we? It's quieter. I do not wish to upset or pee anyone off who's mourning and visiting their relatives' graves. A lot of the old ones are um, towards the back. Donkey legal. There's an in there is, we will go back this way in a minute because there is an interesting modern one that I must show you, but I won't show you the name. But it is interesting and obviously very personal to the person. There's a couple of old ones dotted around, but they are blistered up, so we might as well go back that way. I'll just pause you for a minute. There we go, I had to pause you for a moment for a reason. It's a big old cemetery, this one's a couple of old graves over here, so we'll have a look. This is reserved. Sorry, I know I'm treading on someone or other, but can't be helped. In loving memory of Stephen Davies, who died January the 6th, 1918, aged 51 years. In the midst of life, we are in death. It's a smashed or damaged one there. Ooh. I like the ones that have got lots of details. Oh, this is interesting. By the looks of it, it's got a long inscription. The family grave of John and Anne James, in loving memory of John James, who departed this life January the 12th, 1891, aged 55 years. John James Sid. Oh, it's in Welsh. Well, she's inscription. 
John James Sid. Yeah, I, do, I, yeah, I ain't even going to try and pronounce that lot, but I, I see. That's interesting, though. Um, also, of John Lloyd James, son of the above, who entered into rest August the 27th, 1880. It looks like 1885, aged 21 years. And you've got also Anne James, wife of the above, who entered into rest January the 14th, 1899, aged 83 years. The family grave of Richard Lewis and Jane Anne James. You've got Richard Lewis James, son of the above, who departed this life May the 5th, 1896, aged one year and ten months. Adieu, sweet babe, so short was thy stay. Just looked about, then called away. Thy angel face we all did see, but soon we were deprived of thee. Sleep on, dear babe, and take thy rest. God calleth thee, God calleth them, he loveth the best. Which is sad, isn't it? <clears throat> As I'm always saying in my cemetery uh, videos and whatnot, infant mortality was horrendous in those days. Absolutely horrendous. So we shall try and creep through an area where we're not going to bother anyone, hopefully. And try and find this grave because it is up here somewhere. I have seen it. I'm just pointing you down at the floor a minute because there's people around. Yeah, it's a lot. I know it's a long way somewhere. It's in the form of a car. This way. We'll be going to the church in a minute. Yes, I think I can see it in the corner. I shouldn't. Ah, yes, I can see it, yeah. It's up here on the corner. we got a nice view of the church through the trees there as well. Whew, sorry about having to point you down every now and then. Close like this you have to be a bit, well, very careful and hopefully considerate of people's feelings. Oh, it's a fancy old one, look. The inscription's all worn away on that, which is a shame. And this is the one I wanted to show you. This grave here, which I can't go too much over to because it's got bloke's name on it and it's it's relatively recent but yeah so yeah that's that's an interesting one these ones as you can see are relatively new but we're gonna walk around this way oh look the dozens of magpies there's about 16 of them there garden view I have no idea what 16 magpies means there's two there at the moment one for sorrow, two for joy, there they go. And in the words of Queen Elizabeth I on the joy thing, by God's blood we could all do with that commodity, my lords. In loving memory of William... Pony, sir. P O N Pommies here. P O M E I S E R. Pommies here. Beloved husband of the above. And it is the family grave of William and Hortense Pommies here. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord for. Their work do follow them. They've got also in loving memory of our dear mother Hortense Pomisia 
I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, or Pomsia, who died October the 9th, 1927, aged 74 years. So yeah, that's an interesting one. Oh. And this is the church that we're going to have a look at now. We can't go inside the church itself, um, but it does have a little area that you can see if no one's in there. And the, the bell tower thing of it, which looks much older, older than the church itself. This is an interesting one, this cemetery. Um, when I looked online, it said about it being opened in the 1880s. So, I don't know. Yeah, look, this is Garden View, Manor Park Cemetery. And we're now going to have a look at the, the church. Which is a pretty enough building in its own right, I suppose. No one's in there. It's opened. Now this is where you get through into the chapel, which is closed. Oh, this is like a window through. That would go up into the bell tower area, I presume. You've got two pieces of stained glass up there. Which is one of the things I was told to look out for. And this is a waiting room. Where of course people wait. Yeah, so I don't know if we can go out this way or not. I don't think we can, I think it's locked. Yeah, it's locked that. Any road. I won't not pointing you over to the wall deliberately because it's full of absolutely full of memorials. Still, let's get out the sun so we can see it. See, it's got a fine old bell tower. We will walk around the outside of the church. around this side you can see it's got stained glass it will be a uh, uh, part three what the inside of the chapel looks like I have no idea but um See a bit of stained glass there. It's got a toilet area. And I suppose I'll part three, I'll probably go around this way because there's some big old vaults and tombs and things. And there's a particular one I want to show you on my way out, which is a mausoleum. It's near the front, so we'll be filming that last case we get stopped. Whew. <clears throat> I don't know if it's got a crematorium attached to it, this church, or it has or not, I do not know. We've seen the exterior thereof and a little bit of the inside. So yeah, you will be joining me for part two in a minute. So, sorry, part three, join me for part three please. <laughs> 